In today's episode of Bizjet TV, we're going to talk about why the Lear 35 and 36 crashes a lot. Now, interestingly enough, when we look at this aeroplane, um, which entered service in the 1970s, uh, they have built 736 of these, out of which 56 have crashed and killed people, which if we work out percentages, is 7.6%. And this is actually the private jet that's crashed the most. So now you're thinking to yourself, ah, it's a dangerous aeroplane. But when we actually look at the crashes, and we see the nature of the crashes and the cause of the crashes, we discover some interesting facts. Now, a lot of the crashes um, happen uh, due to pilot error. Um, pilots uh, having difficulty controlling the aircraft, like on takeoff with engine engine failure on takeoff. Um, that's one aspect. Also controlling the airplane coming in to land. Uh, we had one of the most famous crashes happen in 1996 when the famous uh, golfer Payne Stewart died and he was flying on his airplane and there was a pressurization problem and pressurization system failed and the airplane basically killed everybody. Uh, what happened is pressurization failed, um, the pilots failed to control the pressure and do an emergency descent and consequently um, everybody perished on board and the aircraft ran out of fuel and then crashed. So that's what happened on that one. So there's lots of technical issues also with the aircraft, uh, but bear in mind, you know, this uh, the, the Lear 35 was one of the first private jets out there and back in the 1970s also a lot of the training was done on the aircraft and a lot of the pilots um, were you know not very experienced um, this is another thing which has cropped up in the uh, uh, accident analysis that have been done now bear in mind that the Lear, uh, Learjet design the, the famous Lear 23 was derived from a fighter jet which was developed in Switzerland and then Bill Lear took that um, design and changed it and modified it and turned it into a private jet. Um, so uh, in the beginning, there, there were lots of technical problems with the aircraft. And I think, you know, they didn't quite know what this aircraft was capable of doing. But I think a lot of the crashes, looking at the reports, was due to the pilot inexperience. Uh, controlling the aircraft on single engine, coming into land or on takeoff, um, uh, one engine would fail. One of the things with the, with the Lear uh, 35 and 36 is as like a short wing. And a lot of the reasons why the airplane was fast and that was due to the engine. So there's a lot of power in the engine. So obviously if you've got a lot of power in the engine, suddenly one engine fails, the plane's gonna do that. And if you're not quick to react, so this thing's moving fast through the air, you're pitching up on takeoff and you get this engine failure. If you don't react quickly, this thing's gonna flip. Um, and obviously the pilots didn't have um, the opportunity to practice this maneuver, which you do in the simulator. So if in the simulator you can you know, do all these uh, engine failures on takeoff and learn to control it um, and, and develop the right feel and, the, and the, the right muscle memory so then if it does happen in flight you can correct yourself and keep flying safe and we see most of the accidents happening in the 70s and 80s and that then they you know they developed the, the, the flight simulators for the Lears and they also perfected the way of training pilots um, when Bombardier bought Learjet what they did is they they decided to develop a new a, a new Learjet and they developed the Lear 75 I've been in a Lear 75, very interesting airplane. I sat with one of the, the, the pilots uh, for quite a while at NBAA a few years ago, and he was talking me through, you know, the differences that the Lear 75 had compared to the older Lears uh, with the wing design, uh, the avionics, with the Garmin 5000 avionics, the larger cabin. I've done an excellent job, and it's sad to see that Bombardier have decided to drop Learjet completely. But if you want to read about uh, the Learjet and adventures of flying Learjets around the world, there's a great book out called The Learjet Diaries, written by Greg Madonna. He's a pilot and he flew the Lears in the, early in his career and then he, now he's flying for the airlines. Um, this is really well written. It's uh, written like a novel and um, based on his experience. It's very well written. As it's, a, it's a, one of these page turners. You can keep turning the pages. Oh, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? So very well written. Interesting read. If you're, if you're into aeroplanes or if you just like a book with a bit of adventure, it's a good one to read. I also interviewed him here on Budget TV. You can click on the link above and, and go and uh, watch that video. And you'll hear more about, you know, his stories and that. But if you read the book, you can you can read even more about it. So what I'm saying here is, you know, the Learjet, it, it's, it's not a dangerous airplane. It's just one of these tricky airplanes where you really need to be trained well. And this is where, you know, upset recovery training um, and, you know, simulator training, um, going through a, a lot of the accidents and, and seeing, what, you know, the crashes and doing those maneuvers. So I'd certainly look at, you know, a lot of maneuvers happen, for example, in circle to land. And there was a circle to land incident a couple of years ago in San Diego where the aircraft crashed. Again, you're maneuvering the airplane at slow speed at night. You've got to be very, very careful at how this airplane handles because it's, it's a tricky machine. And so you've got to be really, really careful 
uh, when you're flying a Learjet. You've got to be really well trained um, because it, it's not one of these airplanes that, that forgives you much. There's not much forgiveness in this. There's some airplanes that can forgive certain errors. Well, the Learjet's not that. You've got to really, really be on the ball to, to fly one of these airplanes. Um, another interview I did was with Erin Lear. She's the, the granddaughter of Bill Lear. And she's some in interesting stories to tell as well. So you can click on the link to that video. And I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, Erin's take on, on the whole family thing and the dynamics of, of Learjet and her hope that the Learjet brand may be revived in the future and may continue. Uh, but Learjet is, is, is a brand. It's out there when you hear uh, the word private jet, you always think of the Learjet. Or if you have to say, oh, talk about a private jet, you think the word Learjet. So the brand is out there. Um, but as I said, the Lear 3536 private jet has had most crashes than any other private jet. And again, it's not so much the design of the aircraft. It's the way that I, th I think it's the way the pilots were trained. Um, and because this was an airplane which was uh, built early on in the 70s when the pilot training wasn't as good as it is today. And because there are quite a few of them out there. Um, and also the experience level of the pilots flying these aircraft. Also consider that it's an airplane that doesn't have much range. So a lot of the places it was going, because in the beginning, there weren't that many long haul airplanes in the private jet space. They were really pushing this thing, um, you know, to, to try and do more mileage and that. And so they were playing around with fuel and fuel pumps and fuel transfers and whatever. Um, and sometimes fuel imbalance in the wings has been cause of accidents and that. So I think it was it was a, it was a learning curve. And because Learjet was a pioneer um, and a lot of these crashes happened, um, a lot of the private jet manufacturers have learned a lot from these crashes. And so in building their new aircraft and also in developing the training systems and the avionics, the aerodynamics, the engines that, and how all these things interact together with each other have helped to develop safer, safer aircraft and better training for the pilots. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the times in aviation, things change, things improve after planes crash. Um, so we're hoping now with a lot of the modeling they do uh, and AI and engineering that they do, what we've noticed over the last few years is that a lot of the airplanes, uh, when they go up, new, new models of aircraft, you know, they design this thing on the computer, they do all these simulations and whatever, wind tunnels and whatnot. And then when they eventually put the first prototype together and they go and take it flying, it actually behaves the way the, the AI computerized um, model behaved during simulations on, on the computer. So they're getting a lot better at design and they're managing to design out certain floors. So these airplanes are coming online with a lot less flaws in them. And because, you know, the avionics have improved, situation awareness for the pilots has improved. Uh, this is improving the whole thing and, and improving flight safety overall, which I think is really, really important. So anyway, that's my take on the whole Lear 3536. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out the vid interview I did with Erin Lear and also the interview I did with Greg Madonna, the author of the Learjet Diaries. Check out these two uh, interviews I did. I'm sure you'll enjoy it and grab a copy of the Learjet Diaries, which is great. You can see the link below, uh, which will take you to the Amazon page to be able to buy this book. And if you enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to BizJet TV and give us a super thanks on this one. And that's all for Felicia Party on BizJet TV. And I'll see you in the next one.